Tell me about how you're using them, especially in your small accounts, but as a whole, um, and kind of like what you're thinking with that. Yeah, um, so we actually haven't used them yet. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to ask, um, because we found a pretty cool partner with uh, one of our clients, and um, we want to do something with her in terms of just the, you know, just kind of supporting her, because she's a really good uh, client. Um, you know, she's, it's the same uh, cosmetics brand. She buys a lot of supplies from them. And yeah, I just, I was just curious if you've ever done that before, kind of like whitelist influencer ads on Instagram. I've done TikTok, which is easy because they have the Spark ads. Um, but Facebook, Instagram, I'm not sure how to do it and how performance is. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways. If you need it, I think I have some documentation on like how to send it to them to do. The easiest way is for if they have like a creator or a professional profile. Um, You can't do it if you have like your personal profile, but they have like the creator profile, which is basically like, a hybrid between like business and personal. Um, so they have to have a creator account. And then when they post a piece of content in like that last post screen on Instagram, there's a little line that says like paid partnership. And so you would do like partner and they would tag the brand in it. First time you do it, you have to like the brand and the person have to like accept each other. Essentially, there's like a paid partnership request section in um, Instagram. And so they have to approve each other that they can like tag each other in content. And so then they would uh, post that. And then that shows up as if they've allowed it to be used for ads. So it's like partnership with, and then they have to turn a toggle on for um, ads. And then when you go into ads manager, you would go to use existing post. And then you would, um, you could see, you can see all of the posts that you've been tagged and that you can use. Um, so that's like the easiest way to do it. You can also do whitelisting, which is just harder for them to set up because they need to have a business manager on Facebook and a lot of influencers and creators, like that's just, it's, it's a lot to ask of them to like, give me your like business center ID. And then you essentially set it up as if you, you're like running ads for them where like they give you access to their page and would let you do ads that way. So it's possible to do it that way, but it's way easier to do the branded content route the downside or just like the the stipulations there is that they have to post the content first on their feed and they can't like delete it. And that's how you can like run that as an ad for white labeled content. We, it's essentially like your own brand page where you can create ads. So you could create ads from their page after, as their name um, that they did not post on their feed. So those are kind of the options. I've, I have used it before. I'm not using it in any of my accounts right now. Definitely I've used it for accounts that have like a pretty big um, organic presence just because that's not, I don't offer that sort of management and it's a lot of work to try and get all yeah. of that. So if they, if like a brand says like, Hey, we have a post or we work with this creator influence or whatever, you know, and they bring it to me then I'm like, yep, I can send you directions on how to do it. You guys deal with like all of like the payment and the partnership side of things. Cause I'm not gonna, I don't want to manage, you know, and, and part of it too, is like a lot of times bigger influencers or creators will say like, you have access to this for three months. Well, Facebook and Instagram are not going to turn that off. The good thing with TikTok is that when you give someone like the ad ID from TikTok, you can put like the creator puts on there. You can use it for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months, a year, whatever. And it just expires. And so once it expires, your ad just turns off and it's like the ad authorization has expired. Whereas with Facebook, that's not the case. And so like I've told clients, like I am not going to like market in my calendar to turn off this ad on this day. You can like ping me and tell me, but like I I don't have that capacity and that's not something that's like included in our scope. And that's just me because that's just a lot of work to like remember to turn off this one ad. And then it's also like, it is a little bit harder when, you know, you're scaling an ad and then you have to turn it off. So my preference is like, if you have like a smaller creator that like lets you use it in perpetuity, because it just makes it easier if it ends up working. I think it also depends on the brand. And like, if the brand is like bigger with influencers or creators, if they need that, whereas like some brands are fine to like advertise themselves. And then some really need like that next level of like someone vouching for them, which is why like branded content comes into play. So it's kind of like my like overall pitch thought on it. Um, it does work. It can be a little bit of a headache, just like managing all the logistics of it. But like I've used it for a couple of fashion brands. One was like a kid's fashion brand. One was like an adult women's fashion brand. And then for like a, um, uh, they sell like handbags, like my small account that sells handbags, they do that. So it, it seems like for me, I've done it with a lot of like fashion brands. Fashion kind of 
leans into like needing influencers and like other people vouching for it. Whereas like other products, you just need the brand name, you know, and you're just like, yep, that's great. That sounds like a good product. You're selling the product versus like selling the brand. It's kind of that kind of mix. That's kind of my thoughts on it. Is the juice worth a squeeze to do the white labeling, even though it might <laughs> take a little longer? Or is it just going to go straight into I don't think you ever ate juice that's like that. Sure. It's pretty awesome, it's to be honest. I, I have, so sorry, Brody just hopped in here randomly one day. So I have like five fitness apps. They're all influencer apps. They have their own brand, but then there's like an influencer tied to them, right? So yeah. like, for example, fitness culture, and then the influencer is Steve Cook. And then we have like naked training and the influencers Burke and so like, you know what I mean? But they really just kind of live with the influencer for the most part. Um, we we went the route of obviously since we're with these influencers to where we set up a business manager, got page access, and then I have access to their Instagram. So what I'll do is I'll go in and post as them, write the caption out, and then pitch like the app like at the end of it. So like it'll be a super organic reel of like, hey, this is my favorite like glute building exercise. And then I'll just do like a short transition into you can get a good exercise like this with the app start today for $1 or whatever. Right. Then I'll hop on ads manager and then basically just boost it. You know what I mean? In a way. Um, and it's awesome. Like it, like the click through rates are like outbound unique is usually like 2%, you know what I mean? Which is normally like with a brand account, we're lucky to get over one. Um, and like your costs are just lower. Like even your CPMs are a lot lower. That being said, I have one right now that I'm waiting for page access and I've been waiting for like three weeks hitting up this influencer like, hey, can I get page access? Like I need advertiser access and like, like that is the bottleneck like big time is and they have no idea where their logins are because let's face it, influencers don't, but they're usually not like in the weeds. So they're like, oh, well, so-and-so set this up like three years ago and it's like, okay, well, can we, you know what I mean? Can I get on a screen share with you? You know what I mean? And try to make it work. But Long story short is like the whitelisting for us, um, obviously, since it's their own app, it, it does help too. But like we take a lot of their posts and just boost them. Um, like if I see like a workout doing well, it's like instantly, if it's a top engager who has a bunch of comments, I instantly turn it into an ad um, and put like 10 bucks a day behind it. And then just 20, 50 uh, to 100, depending on, you know what I mean? Like how it's doing. And then I'll just shut it off. And then the next week I'll find another one and kind of cycle through it. So uh, from that standpoint, I like the whitelisting part of it. I haven't done like the collab, you know, uh, side of things or the paid partnerships, but that's because these influencers own the brand. So it's like, uh, eh, you know, I don't really have to do that. So do you have a, uh, are you doing that yourself or you have a team person on the team doing it? Like just, I'm trying to imagine what skills. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. No, I yeah. just, we basically, we have five different ad accounts, obviously with each one. Um, and then like we have a videographer that films the content, I take it, put it, you know what I mean, cap cut, post it, write the caption through chat GPT or whatever it is. And then if I see it doing well, I basically just start boosting it. 